Welcome to the tutorial for Galactic Strike Force by Greater Than Games. In this tutorial, I will show you how to complete an entire game turn and go over some of the less explained rules within the rulebook. So during setup, the very first thing that you will do is each player picks a Strike Force ship and puts its ship panel active side up and the ship marker in front of them and the strike force deck to the side, face up. So here is uh, the first part of it. So let's take a look here, depending on which ship that you want to be. So um, actually, let's just go ahead and do the Conclave of Nephon. So here in the sheet, it shows all the different parts of your ship. Here, that is your weapon power. Over here is your shields. And in the middle here, you have your secondary engager bonus, um, which we'll go a little bit more into during the combat. But essentially, if you support another player in combat, you will bestow this engager bonus to that ship. So now that we have chosen which ship that we are going to play as, we will take our ship marker, or if you did purchase the miniatures, you can use that as well and you will take your custom deck of cards that are specific to your ship. So all eight of these cards here are for the Conclave of Niphon. On here you will have all of your different cards and their abilities. Now one of the things about this is you will actually take these Shuffle them up. I'm just doing kind of a basic shuffle here. But then what you will do is you will take this deck of cards, and usually, actually, I put it to the top here. So, I'll kind of show you that. So, you will take them, put them top here, but you will actually put them face up. Now the benefit to that is that you get to see what the next card that is coming out will be. There's a lot of benefits with this in station cards and some of the decks on the custom ships that allow you to draw extra cards out of your draw pile. And it's really nice to be able to see exactly what card is coming up next. So then what you will do is you will take your ship, so we'll get rid of these other ones here, and then I personally do like to do this. I've read some people that do not, but again, I guess I just look at the fact that the game's going to be fiddly, so you may as well just get used to it. So right here it says place a number of weaponry and defense token on your ship panels equal to the number printed on the panels. So right here we have two, so we have two tokens, we have a three, and we have three shield tokens. Now another point of confusion for some people seems to be the green or energy. So the energy is the combined total of all of these tokens. Now, you can also have tokens out to the side here um, when you start adding different ship upgrades such as this universal link. When you add it, you would put it here and then you would put another token on it like this. So in the beginning we had two plus the three, so you would have a total of five energy. Now this token brings this up to three weaponry and three shields, so you would have a total of six energy. Now the other point of contention for a lot of people is exactly how you remove things. If it tells you to remove a green energy, that just means you remove 
one point. There are certain things that will tell you to remove specifics, such as shields or weapons. But if it says energy, you remove it in the order that the rules explain it as. So how that works is, if you lose an energy point, you first take it from shields. If you have an installed shield or defense tech over here, you will remove it from here first. And that may scrap that card. You only remove these when there are no other cards to take the defense points off of. Once these are all gone, so let's say that we lost all of these, then you start taking away weapon energy. And again, it works the same way, from the outside in. So in this case, if we took another single damage on this ship, we would remove this, this card would come off, and it would be scrapped. Now, some cards do have special effects that give you different things, like this one we actually should have added another energy, because right here it says, when you install this tech, Conclave of Nifon gets one additional weapon energy in addition to this one over here. But since it's scrapped, this card is discarded and out of play. You lose that one energy, and now you're down to two weapon energy and zero shields. Now because of the way that it works with the tokens, my personal belief and I'm the reason that they give you these is you do have a zero point on both weapons and shield or defense. So once you've lost all of your points, put that over there, cover up this initial mark here so that you know that you have zero shields. If you gain shields further along, you just remove this token and add them back on like this. So now you have two shields and two weaponry. Okay, so once everyone has chosen their ships, pulled their decks, gotten their ship markers and or miniatures, set up their tokens on their ships, then what you will do is choose three sector panels and lay them out side by side, contested side up. Uh, real quick, right here, very easy to see on these panels where you have contested on all of the panels right under the event section. So on these panels you will see a couple of different sections. You will see your flavor text or fluff. You will see your station decks first, middle, and last. You will see the name of the sector and you will see the event box with the symbol that corresponds to when during a round this event is triggered and the exact thing that happens. Also you will see a spot for opposition ships. So in here it does say select. Uh, it's really up to you whether you want to do random or if you want to select three doesn't really matter, but you can take a couple of them. So we'll say this one, this one, and this one. So, on these, they each have different bonuses here. Or, I shouldn't say bonuses, but events. So on this one, we have a different phase where remove one green energy, as I explained earlier, from each engaged ship in this sector. Now that is each engaged ship, which means both strike force members and opposition ships. This, the Colvarian Wastes, this sector has only two station decks. When the sector is overrun, scrap the first station deck. So you can see here, in comparison to this one here, 
this has the first, middle, and last, whereas this only has the first and last. Uh, <laughs> based on how this game can go, I actually would not recommend this as a initial starting sector. Um, and the other thing that I should point out uh, in this tutorial is I do have some of the cards, or all of the cards, and the sectors from the expansion uh, Guardians of Volneth. So I'm not sure exactly which one this comes out of. This one seems like it might be a more difficult one, so we'll, we'll pull this one. This one looks a little bit more forgiving for an initial game. So right here it says reduce all prices in the sector by 10 credits. That's pretty nice. And then the last one here is Galvarin's End. That is during the travel phase. This would trigger. The ship in the sector with the most energy travels to the sector with the most ships. And again, this says the ship with the most ships. When it says that, that is a combined total, or, well, here would be a combined total with most ships of strike force and opposition, whereas the ship with the most energy could be either a strike force ship or an opposition ship, depending on how they're set up. So earlier I said and talked about the contested tag here. Contested means that you and the enemy are still fighting for control of the sector. Now, when there are opposition ships unengaged in one of these sectors, they will flip during the last phase of each round, one card starting from left and going to right, for each ship that is not engaged. So if there were four opposition ships, there was only one strike force ship in the sector that had engaged one of the opposition ships, the remainder three would then flip three cards. What happens then is those could be new ships that will come out, they could be just bad events that happen to the strike force members, uh, they could move opposition and or strike force members around uh, there's a lot of different things that can happen there but the worst thing is is that when these three all get flipped in a single phase then the sector becomes overrun so if we look at this here the ship in the sector with the most energy travels to the sector with the most ships during contested <clears throat> becomes the ship in the sector with the most energy travels to the sector with the fewest ships when it's overrun. So again, as I was explaining earlier, the game is definitely fiddly, a lot of mathy, you know, ness to it and whatnot. You're just going to have to get very used to looking for these symbols on every card in the game. And that is going to be something where you're generally going to have at least one person who is going to be familiar with the game, usually the person that owns it. And you can kind of dedicate one person to help out with that. Um, but again, as with any game, it's always nice to have a couple of people that are paying attention instead of playing on their phones. So anyone that can help out with that, I'm sure that uh, your friends would appreciate that. <clears throat> But again, so let's take a look here. Um, this was the Barada Trade Outpost. That was the one where we reduce all the prices by 10 credits. When it's overrun, though, you actually increase all prices in the sector by 10 credits. And then the Lacidio Felt Belt. Remove one energy from each engaged ship in this sector at the end of the phase. When it's overrun, you remove one energy from each engaged strike force ship in the sector. So again, overrunning or having a sector overrun um, not only 
will cause you to lose the game if you have all three sectors overrun at the same time that is an auto loss for the strike force but even having a single one makes these events much more negative or negative in comparison to being positive such as the Barada trade outpost which is a positive on this side a negative on this side so make sure that you pay attention to that and for the next step you are going to select one opposition force and place its flagship panel impending side up ship deck face down and mission deck face up to one side of the sector panels perform any setup actions listed on the flagship panel so we're going to select one uh, let's let's go with this let's go with the singularity so on the singularity what you would do is you would take the mission cards here so you've got these, these would be placed face up, and then you would take the Singularity ships here, and you can see it will say the Singularity on the back, you will shuffle these up, you would actually shuffle the mission cards as well, except for the starting mission. And if you look there right at the top, it says Singularity Starting Mission. All of the opposition forces have a starting mission that will always go on top. Now, here on the setup, if you can see, it'll say, Put the Omega Marker on this panel, and the mission all become one into play on the sector with the most opposition ships. So... <clears throat> We will do that in a second, but this would be the starting mission, so that is going to go out immediately. And then you are going to put the Omega, so this is the flagship. Now each opposition force has a flagship. And just so I can show you this real quick, once a sector is overrun, then you are going to play the flagship into that sector. So what you'll do is you'll flip over the opposition to assault instead of as we started with singularity impending. You'll flip it over to the assault and then right down here this will show you the stats that the flagship has and usually it'll tell you um, be different events um, for different phases just like the ships and the sectors that you'll have so different things will happen based on which opposition force that you have out but anyway we'll go back to this here so with the setup said right here we'll put the Omega marker on the panel and the mission all become one into play into the sector with the most opposition ships so you'll do that first now again on the missions you would also go ahead and shuffle these as well just to make sure that you have everything good there and then with that you can see right up in the corner here where it says front. So these are all going to be played face up, whereas over here, as you can see, all of the opposition ships are face down. And that will bring us to the next step of setup. So here we are after almost completely setting up the game. We've got all three sectors placed onto the board here. We have the station scrap pile, which we'll get to in a minute. Um, I've chosen another ship, uh, Therindim, um, along with its draw pile. This here is the singularity starting mission that we will place here in a second. Again, uh, once we get to the opposition ship placement, 
we have the conclave of Nifon, which we had talked about earlier, and you can see here we have corresponding tokens on both ships based on their starting values and their decks above them. Over here, off to the side, we have the singularity, their missions, and the opposition ships. So now what we do is we distribute cards from the opposition ship deck equal to twice the number of players as evenly as possible among the three sectors. So, what we will do here is we will take the singularity ships and we'll go ahead and give these a shuffle real quick. I should have done this earlier off camera, but if it moves, it is what it is. So what we'll do here is we'll give these a shuffle and then we will take twice the players. So here we have one and two players on this game. So we will deal a total of four opposition ships. And because we have to split them as equal as possible between the three sectors, once we get the fourth ship, we can actually place it into any sector that we want. That is one thing about this game, because it's a co-op game, you get to make the decision that is best for you. Now in this case, because we have the initial draw, I mean I could definitely say there's probably a place where it is best put, more than likely it's going to be here, um, just because you do get to remove an energy from each engaged ship in this sector, so if we had both ships here, but then the other uh, sectors are left alone. Um, so let's say, let's go ahead and do that. We'll go ahead and put the second ship here. But again, it's based on whatever you or your player group decide as to where they put these ships. If there's ever a tie situation, um, such as move to wherever the most ships are and two sectors are tied, it always errs in the direction of the player or the players so you get to make that decision with the singularity specifically um, if you remember we had up the setup uh, put the omega marker on this panel and the mission all become one into play in the sector with the most opposition ships so this is automatically going to go into play here so now that we have this set up the next thing that we will do is we will shuffle the station cards, which I did do off camera, and deal a stack of five cards, strike force side up, into each slot on the sector panels, placing the remainder of the cards opposition side up to one side of the sector panels. So already we have opposition side up. Now on these station cards, you can see here it has an orange side when you are th when that's opposition side up basically this is a negative more than likely that will happen to you if these opposition ships go unengaged by the end of the entire round on the other side it is something that you can purchase out of these station decks during the requisition phase. So what you'll do is you will take these decks here and again it kind of just depends on how you want to do it. You can deal one, 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 one. Uh, you can deal them this way. Uh, generally the way that I do it is I just do one, two, three, four, five, flip them and then put them in the respective decks. So again, 
there's no specific um, way that I've seen to do this, so that's just the way that I do it. So what you'll do is you'll go through these and create a station deck. So each one of these, as I believe I said earlier, has five cards in it. Each of these station decks can be purchased from, but cannot be searched through. And what I mean by that is that if you are in a sector and you wish to purchase a card, you must purchase the top card from the deck. So on any of these, you can purchase from the first, the middle, or the last. It does not matter, but you cannot purchase the second card in the first deck without first purchasing the first card in the first deck. So again here, as we're going through, let's say that you purchased one of these cards. If you purchase this one, this one here is the fine-tuned target HUD. This one costs 50 credits, and when you purchase it, then this would go at the bottom of your respective deck. But by doing that, what you'll do is you will show the card that was underneath it. I believe it was this one, yes. So you will show the card that was underneath it. So underneath this card was a cloak drive. Now the cloak drive can be purchased because once you purchase the card that was on top, the second card in that pile becomes available for requisition. Or you could purchase from one of the other two stations in this sector. That choice is yours depending on which sector and which station that you want to purchase from. And as you go through the game, generally these first or first two sectors are going to be cycled through a lot quicker. The primary reason is, is as, we, as I mentioned earlier, opposition ships that go unengaged, which if you look at what we have here, we only have two ships, so you can only possibly engage two opposition ships. So no matter what, two of these cards are going to be flipped, whether it's the first two in this sector, or one and one in two sectors, which means that these first cards are going to get flipped. The opposition is going to get to play, and this card will either go into play, such as this one, which is a ship that will come out into this sector, or in this case, it is a boost, which is a one-time effect, and once that is done, that will go on top of the station scrap, and then at the end, when any of these are empty, we will take this deck, we will shuffle it, and then we will deal another five cards, station side up, down, to replenish the market in these sectors. After you have set up the station decks, then what each player will do is they will draw four cards from their strike force deck right here and here and any other players that you have. This game does support up to six players. In addition, this game is easily solvable. Um, you can definitely play it solitaire without much problem uh, because of the shared knowledge. You don't have to worry about the fact that you can't tell someone what cards that you have in your hand or what, the, what you're wanting to do during each phase. So you can play solo with two ships or up to six 
if you want a <laughs> extremely long game. Um, but in this case, what we'll do is we will just draw the starting hand for each of these, and then we will be get ready to begin the game. So now that the cards have been drawn, these are the hands. Um, obviously, you would have them in your hand, but for this purpose, I have them laid sideways just to show which cards are in your hand and which are not. So Galactic Strike Force has five different phases with players acting together on each phase. The first phase is the travel phase. That's where players may move their ship to another sector. The second phase is the requisition phase. That's where players may purchase cards from station decks within the sector that they occupy. The third phase is the installation phase. That's where players may install techs from their hand to their ship. The fourth phase is the battle phase. Strike force ships engage in battle with opposition ships up here within the sector that they occupy. And the fifth phase is the aftermath phase. That is when unengaged opposition ships flip station cards and players refill their hands. Now do keep in mind that each phase has multiple sub-phases and we will go over each of these in turn. Again, each phase is made up of several events. Any generic boosts or boosts specific to the current phase can be played after but not during any of these events. At the start of each phase is a phase action event. During that event, you will complete the actions on any cards or panels in play with that phase's icon in whatever order the players choose. If new cards with the icon of the current phase enter play as a result of any of these actions, they do not take place this round. And that is important because some of these actions, especially during the aftermath phase, when you flip these cards to the opposition side, will bring out new ships or new events, and those do not trigger during the same phase that they come out. So if they're during the aftermath phase, which is the last phase of the game, if a ship comes out and on it it says it has an aftermath event, that will not trigger during the phase that it came out.